I don't care how it, how it happens, I just want to be a car. <laughs> Hi, my name is Malachi Perry, and I'm an automotive technician. So I've been working on cars ever since I was about uh, 13, 14 years old. My grandfather taught my mom, and then my mom taught me, and then I just kind of learned everything from her and my uncles. I'm AC certified. Right now, I hold two AC certifications in brakes and steering and suspension. Do you mind telling the anecdote about how you wanted to be a car when you grew up? So, I was young. I was probably like... Five. And I was watching this one movie that was made back in the 80s and it was uh, Moonwalker with Michael Jackson in it. And he wished upon a star and then all of a sudden he started making all these mechanical noises and he turns into a car. As soon as I saw that from that point on, I wanted to be a car. I don't care how it, how it happens, I just want to be a car. <laughs> all right, so it looks like today we're gonna be playing Car Mechanic Simulator 2021. Have you ever heard of a car wash, dude? Like, if you take care of the car, the car will take care of you. Thank God the customer's not around. <laughs> I've been in a cars where it had, as soon as you pop the hood, there's like an animal in there. I'm like, okay, really? Like snakes, possums, cats. It's just not okay. When I was working at Honda, a customer came in because they kept having like a foul smell coming through their vents. Me and all the technicians, we all looked at each other. We're like, okay, so we already know what's gonna happen. We're just like expecting like the shredded remains of it. But as soon as we pop the hood, we just see like this long like rattlesnake just all the way across the engine and it was dead. I just took like a gasket scraper. I was just scraping it off the engine. That's one of many animal versus car stories. Just check your cars before you take off, especially in the winter time because after you drive and you're, you go in the house and everything, your car is still warm, it's still hot. Now you have a stray animal that's outside in the, in the cold, they're looking for a nice warm place to stay and they burrow inside your car because of the heat from the engine and transmission. So then they're asleep in the morning when you get ready to go to work, you start the engine and well, that's it. <laughs> Story over. You can roll the credits after that. Like, that's it. So parts to fix. We got the brakes, we got the fuel pump, oil filter, round air filter, two carb, and the four tires. Okay, let's just... Ah, uh, it does not... If only it was this easy in real life. Just the lift automatically does it for you. I would love that. You have no idea. <laughs> this is actually very detailed. This is pretty cool. Yeah, I usually don't really work on cars this rusty because I live in Southern California. Like, I'm in the middle of like South Orange County, so it's like, there's no snow here, thank God. Oh no, is that one rusted? I knew it, I knew it! <laughs> I was counting it! I'm like, there's no way that this car is not gonna have anything that's not rusted out here that I'm gonna have to take off. I just knew it. Where's the peanut butter blaster? At least that's what I call it. It's called PB blaster, it's like rust penetrant spray. Ah, there we go. Once again, if only things were that easy. I am dismounting the tire so I can put on new tires on these wheels. At least that's what I think I did. I'm not sure what happened right now. We'll find out eventually. Three different ways to balance this tire. Should only be two ways, but it's all right. This is a good simulator so far. I like this, this is fun. So now I'm gonna change the oil. Use equipment. There we go. Okay, figured it out. Yeah, like it's really never actually that easy. I'll say this, like on some cars it's easier, like you know, on your Japanese cars it's easier to do an oil change versus on like a European car or even some American cars. Or, okay, I gotta tell y'all this one, hang on. <laughs> so this person, like they made an enemy because it came in for a simple oil change and I'm trying to unscrew the drain plug just to change the oil and for some reason it's not loosening, like for, I can't loosen it for the life of me. And we had like three other technicians come over and we're like, dude, there's something wrong that's going on here. We're looking at the old oil pan and we're trying to get the drain plug out. And it turns out that whoever did his last oil change put on Loctite on his drain plug. And I'm like, yo, you made an enemy or something like that. And we're like, yo, like somebody hates this dude. <laughs> we ended up finding out he ended up being cheated on by somebody or something like that. Like this whole love triangle thing. I don't remember all the details because I don't know this dude. He ended up going into that auto shop where that guy worked at. And so he put a gasket sealer on his oil pan and Loctite on the screws. And I'm like, dude, like, that's why I always say never piss off the people who fix your food or fix your car. <laughs> Cause we're vindictive. I'm not vindictive, like I've been working on that. It actually really does look like real life. Okay, here we go, drum brake cylinder, there it is. Okay, so we're gonna need two of those. 215, 75, 15. Okay, four, 
thousand dollars for these? Jeez, this piece of crap. Sorry. <laughs> Confessions of an automotive technician. <laughs> oh Lord, forgive me. <laughs> oh Lord, see, uh, uh, see, when I open my own auto shop, it ain't gonna look like this. It's gonna be nice, clean, calm, cool, and collected. Like, uh, uh, it ain't gonna be looking like this. This drives me nuts. I can't. So this is a tire mounting machine. So what I'm doing here is taking the rubber off the wheel. So when you're dismounting a tire, what you should really do is make sure that the shovel, which is that part right there, is not gonna close in on the sensor. If you do, then you just damage the sensor. Well, actually you didn't really damage it, you more like destroyed it. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> hey, there they go. There's the new tires. I just wanna get this guy out of my shop. <laughs> I think I did all the tires, so that's a thing now. Oh yeah, the oil filter. <laughs> all right, I hope this is the new part. Let's see. Yes! Okay, there we go. Back in its place. Oh my God, it said back in its place. That is something that people need to do. Put things back in their place. I cannot tell you how many times I'm like looking for something and I'm looking for it in its proper place, right? Where it should be at. And guess what? It's not there because somebody moved it someplace else. So now nobody can find it. See, when I oh open my gosh. auto shop, it ain't gonna look like this. It's gonna be nice, clean, calm, cool, and collected. Like, uh-uh, it ain't gonna be looking like this. I'm like venting as I go along. Whenever you're putting on a wheel, you always wanna do it in a star pattern because that's kind of like, you're making sure it's even force all along the side of the wheel. So that way your wheel goes on straight and it doesn't go on crooked or anything like that. The issues are usually wheel offs. It's a very, very serious thing because it's like, what if you work on someone's car and you take their wheel off and you put it back on, but you didn't put it back on correctly or you didn't even torque it down to manufacturer spec. And now that person is behind the wheel of that car and they get on the freeway and they're traveling at 70 miles an hour, right? Their wheel flies off at 70 miles an hour. Whenever it's something that's this serious, I always think of an extreme case scenario. So that way it covers whatever I do and it makes sure that whatever I put on is gonna be A-OK. -okay. I meant to click on that one and not that one, but it's all right. It's a simulator, it's all good. All right, so the fuel pump and the round air filter to carb. I cannot for the life of me find this fuel pump, dude. I'm trying to look in the back here because usually the fuel pump is over by the gas tank, which is in the back, so <laughs> I'm clicking really where the fuel tank should be at, but it's, nothing's happening. We went to what's called examination mode to figure out where the parts are at. We found it through examination mode. I mean, normally the way you take off a fuel pump, again, depending on your make and model, is you go inside the car, you remove the rear seats, and you access the fuel tank that way. So like right here and right here, essentially, are where the fuel pump or fuel pumps would be located at. Oh, wait, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. There we go. Hey! Sweet, perfect fit. I just also remember that I have to add oil to it, so I'm just gonna do that before I forget. When I'm working on cars, I be eavesdropping on people's conversations. I be hearing some juicy stuff. <laughs> I remember I was working at this one auto shop. This lady, I guess she was like working like on like her laptop or something like that. She was in like some kind of like meeting or whatever. So she has her laptop in her passenger seat. She's sitting in the driver's seat. I'm like underneath her hood, like, you know, doing an inspection. And I guess she forgot her that her window was slightly cracked. And I'm hearing that like, I guess one of her friends ended up leaving another friend because they got drunk at the club and they ended up like cheating on somebody. And I'm like, ooh, talk slow. Like, I wanna hear this. I forget I'm working on the car at this point. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm invested in this conversation. That's why I love working on cars. Like, I just hear and see everything. Okay, so I think this car is done, essentially. Other tasks. Change brake fluid. Oh, see? See? Thank God I clicked on other tasks because I would have missed this. That off. Hey! Oh yeah, so there's an important thing. If your brake fluid level is low, then usually that's a telltale sign that you need your brake pads changed or you need some kind of brake service. So in this case, since we already did the brakes and the brake fluid is so low, then that means there's some kind of hydraulic leak somewhere potentially because it didn't go all the way back up to its normal level. So we'll just add fluid and then, you know, we'll pump the brakes. In real life, that's what you're supposed to do, but yeah, I don't see I'm not even going over there because that side of the shop just makes me mad. 
I'm not even going over there. Hey, there we go. Okay, I did it. Sweet, okay. So honestly, this is a pretty cool game. If you wanna figure out how to work on cars, but you just don't have the means to just yet, like if you don't have the money to go back to school or no one that is close to you really knows how to work on cars or what have you, I think this would be a good option for you. I think anybody in the automotive field would benefit from this game. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most accurate, one being like not accurate at all by any stretch of the imagination, I would probably give this game like a good like seven out of 10, eight out of 10 around there. There are some things in it to where it's like, I feel like it's kind of missing a step or you know, something kind of just disappears and you're like, okay, where did it go? And you don't really know where you left off at. But other than that though, I mean, with my first time playing this game, this is very, very accurate of what it's like to work on a car. I really want to buy this game. Like, this is really cool. I like it. <laughs>